My name is Alex. I'm going to be hosting today's webinar. If you haven't done so already, and if you are able to hear my voice as well as see my screen, you should see me scrolling around there, then do me a favor and in your GoToWebinar control panel, there's a question field. If you can just type in an OK or it sounds good, that way I know everything's working. That would be great. And actually, that's my that's my trick. I tricked you. Uh, that's just to get you to see where the question field is. I mean, it tells me that everything's working and I enjoy that, but uh, that is where the question field is. So as we go today, um, if you have any questions, uh, just put those in there. And then at the end, I'll open it up for some Q&A time and I'll do my best to answer all the questions there. Uh, and also just to um, let you know that this, this session is being recorded. And so if you want to watch this again at some point, there's going to be an article in our support knowledge base here, support center. That's going to go over the 990N, and we'll also have this video. So uh, if you ever want to see it again, there it will be. So today what we're going to be doing is going over the 990N. So for those of you who use Applos, uh, we provide a number of different software features for people, uh, one of which is we are e-file providers for the Form 990 series. We are authorized e-file providers, so we can submit that on your behalf for either the 990N or the 990EZ. There is another form of the 990 called the full form or just the form 990. And that is typically for people that are over a certain re revenue threshold. But today we're just gonna be focusing on the 990M. Uh, we do have the 990EZ available of which there's a different webinar that I did earlier this week. and We'll do next week as well. So if you wanna watch that one, that's there. The full form, we don't have an e-file path for, uh, but we do have some solutions there. So if you'd like more information on the full form 990, let me know. But for today, what we're going to do is the 990N. Now, this is a form that uh, all the nonprofits need to file. Um, if you are a church, you're typically exempt as a religious entity, but for most other nonprofits, you'll need to file this. And the eligibility here is if you make $50,000 or less in total gross income or receipts, uh, then you need to file the 990N. What that means is it's not your net revenue, it's not your net income, this is gross. So if your total revenue is 50 or less, then you would wanna file the 990N. If you go over that between 50 and 200, then you would fall into the 990EZ category. So for today, what we're gonna be looking at is the 990N. Now also this form here is a purely electronic form, which means there is no paper version of this form. This has to be filed electronically. There's only a couple of providers of which we are one. And so if you have an Apple subscription, the cost is free. You can start a new 990N just by clicking on this button. Now, I already have one in process. So if you were to go to fund accounting and then hover over e-file, there's the three options there. We're on this page currently of start a new filing. So I'm gonna go over to in progress and I'm gonna pick up where I left off with my 990N here for the 2019 year. Let's continue. Okay, so this is step one. So when you start a new 990N, this is where you come is step one here, and it's gonna ask for your organization's EIN. So you type that in there. This is just a demo one that we have. So it says Apple software. And then you pick your tax year. Most organizations are gonna have a January 1st fiscal year start. You might also have a, you know, a July 1st or a different fiscal year. The 990 is due on the 15th day of the fifth month of your fiscal year. A lot of F sounds in there. 15th day of the fifth month of your fiscal year. So if you are a January 1st fiscal year start, that means your due date is May 15th for your 990. If you have a, uh, let's say like a February 1st start date, then that would be a month later, it'd be June 15th, so on and so forth. So you pick your start date there, and then you pick what year you're filing for. And with Applos, you can file the 2017, 18, or 19 years. And then depending on what your EIN is, then we actually pull back whether or not you have a filing on, on record with the IRS for that particular fiscal year. So we'll pull back and say, oh, you're missing a 2017, but you've done 18 and 19. So we're, well, at least we're going to do 19. So there you go. So once you put in your EIN and then your fiscal year here, and then pick your year, hit save and continue, and you move on to the next, next screen which is now asking for who is preparing this form. So I'm gonna put in my name, Alex Acri. My name or phone number here is, uh, let's just do it, 888-741316. So you put in your phone number, who's filing, uh, save and continue. And then here is the bulk of the form, <laughs> gross receipts qualification. I certify that this organization has had gross receipts or total income 
of less than 50 grand this tax year? Yes. If no, then you probably need to do some other different form, 990 easy or uh, the full form. But if you're under 50 grand, then yes. Next question, has your organization gone out of business? Yes, if so, no, if not. So I'm gonna say no. Uh, if your organization conducts business using another name other than associated with your EIN, enter the names of it here. So I could just put in, you know, Applos. You know, we refer to ourselves as Applos, not Applos software. So I could put in a DBA as, you know, Applos, another name, just anything that you might go by that's different. And then this is not required on the 990N form, but we do ask just out of curiosity, what software do you use to manage your nonprofit's finances? So of course, I'm gonna say <laughs> Applos, thank you very much. Put that there and then save and continue. And then here's the organization mailing address. Now, if you have a filing on the on file with the IRS, this information should be populated for you. If not, then you would just type this in. Oops, applos.com. I'm gonna put in 47 West Shaw Avenue. Fresno, CA 93704. And then the principal officer here, you're also gonna put in their name and address here. So if I wanted to just kind of copy the information over, I can press this button. It's gonna bring that over. And then I would just put that person's name, or you can type in a custom address if you've got something different for them. Uh, but once those are filled out, then you hit save and continue. And now it's gonna bring you to a summary page, which says, okay, here it is. Here's your EIN, here's your name, here's your tax year. Here's who's preparing it. Uh, here's the verification that you uh, have not gone out of business and that you made less than 50,000. Here's your DBA that you put in as well as your address and your principal officer. And now you are good to go. And the only thing left to do is just hit file my return with the IRS and that's it. That is the postcard. The postcard is about the easiest form you could ever think of <laughs> on what to file for a, for a tax you know, form for an informational return. Uh, as you were noticing, as I'm going through this, I'm hitting save and continue. So if at any time you needed to go back or go to a different area of Applos or come back to this form, then you can always go to the in progress section and pick up where you left off. So I can go here and now all of that information has now been saved. So that way I don't have to enter it again. And then once you file, uh, about every five minutes, this thing runs and submits the information to the IRS and the feedback is almost instantaneous. So uh, you're gonna file and then you're gonna get an email from us saying, thank you for your submission. And then once it's been accepted or rejected by the IRS for whatever reason, you would get another email from us. The, ad the administrator on the Applis account is gonna get uh, an email from us. And that will basically say it was accepted or it was not accepted for whatever reason. And it would probably spit out some sort of reason there. Now, the, the main reason why I see typically 990Ns come back is one of two things. Either you uh, they have a record of you filing different forms in years past. So, for instance, if you filed a 990EZ last year and then you filed a 990N this year, then that might raise a flag with them to think eh, maybe you're not filing the right form, that kind of thing. Or... What it is, is the 990N is required and suggested to be filed every year, but there is a little bit of a grace period to where if you didn't file it for one year, then as long as you file it once within a three-year consecutive term, then you should be fine. So uh, now that's not permission or license or anything. I still think you should do this every year, but that's just to say that there is a little bit of grace there with this form. Um, but what we've seen a lot of is people saying, hey, my, uh, my return was rejected. And then what we do is we go to the, um, there's a lookup for the IRS that you can go look up the, the tax forms and they haven't filed a 990N in five years. And so therefore their tax exempt status has been removed and now they need to go contact the IRS to get reinstated or whatever action needs to be taken from there. So if it gets rejected, your first line of defense is to contact the IRS. They are gonna be the ones that hold the keys to that information and help you figure out what to do next. Um, we also do partner with a group called the Foundation Group if you go to, um, I would believe it's 501c3.org, yep. this is the foundation group. So they specialize in filing, uh, you know, helping nonprofits thrive. You know, there you go. So uh, starting a nonprofit, keeping compliant, um, all kinds of stuff. They are uh, experts in this field. So we defer a lot to them for some of this. You know, if you, if you need to take some action, we usually point you to them. So that's a resource as well. But uh, assuming everything works and you, need, you do need to file this form and it's accepted, you just hit file my return with the IRS and then it's done. And now you can wait until next year and file the next form. So again, like I said, pretty quick. Uh, this is a very quick form. Uh, again, three to five minutes, you know, as long as you have your address, principal officer, you know, that kind of basic information available, 
It should not take you very long to file and then you'll be good until next year. So uh, what I'd like to do is open it up for some Q&A. So hit me up with your questions. I've got one here already from Robert. Um, <laughs> he asked, how much wood would a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? Uh, thank you for that question. You know, I've done a lot of thinking about that question in my life and I have not come up with a good answer. I'm gonna say seven. That's my answer is seven. So thanks, Robert. <laughs> That was probably just his response to type something in there to make sure that I hear you. So thank you for that. Uh, but I'll mute, I'll mute myself for a minute here uh, and um, uh, just come back in just a minute here and see what questions are available. Okay, <clears throat> question here from Joni is how can you get a copy of what was submitted? Good question. So in your Aplos account, uh, there's always, always gonna be this history tab here. So the history tab is going to show you what is in progress as well as what has been submitted and accepted. Um, so let me uh, let me try something. So I'm going to go to in progress. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just take this return that we just did, and I'll um, go to review and let me just file it to see what happens. Let me see if it gets accepted. It, this might take a minute, so this might be a bad example. But um, so this is submitting pending the IRS acceptance. Um, while we wait for this, this might fire um, in just a minute. But let me take you to um, a site where you can double check on this. So let me, I'm going to pause my screen and just do a little bit of searching because I forget exactly what the URL is. Um, but let's see. So if we go to IRS, I think it's select check here. Yeah, okay. So uh, this URL here, apps.irs.gov slash app slash EOS is an electronic uh, searching system to where you can type in the EIN of what you're looking for. So you can type in your EIN here and then click search. And then that will show what the record is on file with the IRS for what forms have been filed for that EIN and for what years. So if you ever want to just double check and make sure that the IRS has accepted it or received it or what, you know, what the status is, then this would be my first um, line of defense here. This is something that we use pretty often with our team to just help our customers double check stuff. Um, and then as far as a form copy goes, let's see if this has been done yet. Nope, hasn't been, hasn't been submitted yet. Um, yeah, so when this is accepted, what it would show is it would show accepted, and then you would be able to click on this year. So once you click on this year, then it would take you to a kind of a, a summary page showing the details. And then there would be a, uh, an option to download as PDF version of uh, or copy of that filing. But for the 990N, it's kind of weird because there there is no paper form, so there is no like official paper copy. It's more of just we built a PDF paper copy that you can store for yourself. Um, so that's essentially what you would be downloading is is kind of our our submission summary kind of a thing. So hopefully that helps there, Joni. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming through, so we'll assume that um, everybody's good for now. Thank you for joining today's webinar. I appreciate you taking the time. And um, if you have any other questions, then when you're in Aplos, up in the top right, there's the support center, and that's where you can search whether or not we have uh, you know, a support article or some sort of help resource for you already. You can also give us a call at 1-888-274-1316, or on the bottom right here, this little smiley face chat icon is what we call intercom. And you can click on that and open up a chat with our support team. Now, this is not a live chat, but it is as live as we are available. So we, we try to be under, uh, well, I mean, we try to be under 10 minutes as a response, but sometimes just depending on the hour of the day, that gets maybe upwards towards 30. But we really do try to be attentive on that throughout the day. So use that and we'll be happy to help with anything that you need. So thank you again for showing up and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Take care.